Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start the show. All right. What a funny story. Please welcome your host, Tom Shalou. So I remember that I was doing stand-up in rooms not unlike this. It was in the expat world. 
I don't know if you've ever been, like, you know, the expat world is very big overseas. You go over, you know, to Sweden, you find the expat community, and it's a bunch of Americans who are over there, you know, working for IKEA or something. And they all go to the American hangouts and they do like American things. So in China, it's like a serious expat community. So you go there and it's like Australians and Americans and British guys. And there's just, you know, there's like 110,000 American guys, you know, working in Shanghai at any given time. So they go to clubs and they have American comedians come into standard language. So it ends up being like a road gig, like I'm doing a gig in Chicago or something. But we did go out to some like Chinese Bars. I was in uh, three places, Guangzhou, Guangzhou, right? I was in Shanghai, and I was in Beijing. And it was great. I loved China. It's so big, you just feel stupid when you get there. Because, you know, my whole life I'm like, ah, the Chinese, they gotta do that, ah, Chinese, they gotta do that, you know, whatever. Then I go to China, and I'm just like, oh, whatever, they do whatever they want. Like, I just, <laughs> you're blown away by the size and the highways and just the humanity. It's so impressive just seeing people just moving to and fro, just the, the sheer size blows you away and you're just like, wow, I'm done, I don't know anything. And so I loved it, I loved China. But we're out at a bar and, you know, where I think of like prejudice, racism, we in America, like we're so self-centered in America, we even think the bad things are all ours. Like we're like racist, that's just America, that's our thing, you know? Because we're like racism, slavery, civil war, that's ours. But then you go to other countries, like, what? Racism? What? what are you guys doing? That's our thing. Like, <laughs> so I'm always surprised, you know? And you know, we grew up in a very, it was, you know, it, it is much more Asian world now. Like, when I was growing up in the 70s, it was, you know, it was like a, on TV, they played it for like, it was a commercial. Anyone my age or anyone over, probably back to remembers this scene. There was a commercial. There was a woman going into a laundromat. And she says, how do, I, how do you keep my husband's shirt so clean? Ancient Chinese secret. Kong. I was like, really? Really? A gong in a laundry? They did gongs all the time. That was like a, a normal thing. Like watching Get Smart. It was a, it was a detective comedy. But you know, the Chinese guy would walk in. They would play a gong when he walked in. It was like, it was Pat Logan. And the first Asian I met was in junior high. It was a, it was a, a kid from Vietnam. I, I swear, I, I heard it wrong when he walked in. It was like, it affected my life. So, so you think that, you think that petty prejudice is an American thing. But it's not, it's everywhere you go. So we're in this bar, and this Chinese guy, and he is like, you know, he speaks really good English. He's, he's always dealing with the Americans, so he's like, He's, he's like a, a real, you know, diplomat with the, with the British guy. But we went out to a bar, and it was, this wasn't a, an American bar, like an expat hangout. It was kind of a little of both, like the Americans went there and the Chinese went there. And there was a, I mean, China is unbelievable. Like later that night, I'll just say this right now because I just, I just remembered it. Later that night, after we had several drinks, we left, and I'm walking home, and it's very safe in China. Like you can walk through the streets. And there's no danger at all, because nobody breaks the law. Because if you break the law, they'll just like, they just throw you in jail. Like, there's no, there's no question about it. So no one's gonna bonk anybody off the head. Especially in America, no Chinese guy's gonna like, you know, take your wallet, because he will go to jail for a long time. So you just walk home, you're like, totally safe. In the middle of the night, walk home. And me and my buddy, the guy who was uh, doing stand up there with me, we're walking home, and it's this dusty street, so like Chinese, like this big, wide street. And say it's like, you know, 3.45 a.m. and we're just walking and then just silently, it's so quiet out there, you know, and just silently a bicycle rides by me and it's just like you just hear the rubber tires of the bike go by. And he's got, it's one of those Chinese bikes with like the crates on them filled with ducks. Like huge crates. Like they should be on a truck, but it's on a bike. Massive crates all filled with ducks. And there was and he just went riding on me and there was one duck with a skinny neck and his head was sticking up and then he was just like this. Like he went by me, I'm looking at him, the duck's looking at me like, like he has no idea they're gonna chop his head off very soon. And he just, just looking at me at like four in the morning and I was like, oh there goes there goes a duck. So we're in the bar and there's a band playing, okay? 
first of all, there's a there's another section of the bar, and there's like ladies everywhere. They look kind of like painted ladies, like they really are. There was like kind of these beautiful Asian women, and they were kind of standing around. It was like a dance floor, so it seemed to be like a little kind of single scene or something in this in this bar. And I was like, wow, look at those ladies. They're really, uh, you know, look at those look at those women, you know, beautiful. And the, the Chinese guy was like, they're all Mongolians. <laughs> it's the Chinese guy. He's like. They're all Mongolians. Did you guys know that? About the Mongolians? I was, I was like, Mongolians? What are you talking about? Like, <laughs> like uh, you know, like the Khans? What are you talking about? But the Mongolians, I know they're I know they're up there in Mongolia, but I didn't know that the Chinese had a thing against the Mongolians. Like they looked down on them. But they 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 look beautiful, these people. But this Chinese have it. It's all Mongolians. What are you talking about? Like, it's like oh, okay. So then there's a band playing, and they're rocking out. It's like an Asian band, and they're like a heavy metal band, you know? Like kind of Asian heavy metal. Like they're playing all like the 70s and 80s rock and roll hits, you know? And like Van Halen and stuff like that. And it was the lead singer, a woman, she had like the long hair. And then the guitarist also had like the long black hair, you know? So they're like, they're rocking out together, you know? And they're doing Rolling Stones, and they're doing, you know, all the, a lot of tunes from the 80s. And I was really, this band was very impressive. They were dead on. And I was like, this is a great man, huh? I can't believe, because no one's paying attention. Just me, the American guy, I'm like, giving this band love. And now they're like looking at me, like when they play it. They're, they're all staring at me with the hair, you know, like this guy really likes it. No one else is showing them any love. So I go to the Chinese guy, I was like, this band is amazing. And he was like, they're Filipinos. <laughs> he was like, Filipinos, they all make great cover bands. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Did you know that? I keep going to the Asians. Did you know the stereotype? Filipinos make great cover bands? I mean, the specificity of their racism, you have to give credit. I mean, even we don't do that, right? But this guy said, he said, yeah, anymore, anymore you go to Shanghai, it's a Filipino cover band. They're great, they, they know how to play American music. They can't write songs worth the damn, but they can, they're great cover bands. That's what he says. So now I'm feeling so bad for this Filipino cover band. So I'm like really looking at them, you know? And now I see they really are Filipino. Like, you know, you get all you know, you get all Asian out over there, and I was like, but now I'm looking at them and they all look like that lead singer from Journey, you know, like they all have the you know the Filipino, the, the new lead singer. And they all have that straight long hair and they're wearing like headbands and stuff. So they're rocking out and they're looking at me totally because I'm, I'm showing them love. So I go up to them in between songs and I was like, I'm gonna request a song. Just, you know, because you know I, somebody's gotta show us some love. So I go up and I say, hey, uh, I'm trying to think of a good song that they might know. So I was like, hey, do you know uh, Surrender by Cheap Drink? Cheap Drink, Surrender? And, and the woman, that's, this shows you the work ethic. Like, we're all, in America, we're all like, yeah, American made, we work hard. But we don't. Like, we're not hard workers, we should admit that. And like, Asia, they all have a better work ethic than us, okay? And I'm gonna prove it to you. I go up to this band and I was like, uh, Surrender, Cheap Drink? And they were like, and they, they, they crowd in, like the drummer leans over his drum kit, and all the long hair, they're all like, and they're having a discussion, they're like, I just want to and they're talking, and then the, the woman comes up, she's like, you come back tomorrow! <laughs> they were going to learn the cheap trick, the, they, they're probably going to learn the whole live at Budokan now, just for me. I mean, that shows you a work ethic, doesn't it? It's a good story about, it's, it's, it, I think it's a life affirming story. You guys are ready for some great storytellers, everybody? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is Caitlin in there? Ben, do you see Caitlin at all? She's going to be here because I saw her, so she's, she's on her way. But uh, what I'm going to do is bring up to the stage my, my wonderful guest. I wanted to have him on the show for, for some time. And, uh, you know, he was a Former editor at the Onion, he's done stuff for uh, Adult Swim. He does all these things. I don't even know what they are. He did this thing, Thing X, this hilarious website. I don't even know what it was, but I would just go in there and laugh. Uh, but he's a great guy and uh, he's hilarious, and I'm glad he finally, uh, that we finally got him up here. Let's welcome. 